In this video, we're going to talk about lists, which are a kind of value that can be used to support arbitrary size data. Before we get to that, let's start by looking at the course website, and in particular, let's look at the mechanisms page. We can review this to see what we've done so far. So, so far, we've looked at numbers, strings, images, and booleans. All of these are atomic data. And we've also looked at compound data that we define with define struct. What we're going to look at in this video is arbitrary size data. We'll look at lists. And as we look at list values, we'll look at a set of primitives for operating on those values described here. So you can really use this mechanism page to see what we've done so far and to see where this new kind of value fits. And as you can see, this is the last primitive value that we're going to see in the course. Everything else we build in the way of values will be built out of these. Now why do we need arbitrary size data? Well, arbitrary size data is used to represent information of arbitrary size. So for example, if we want to represent all my favorite hockey teams, we don't know how many there are, that's arbitrary size. By arbitrary, we don't mean that it's random or something. We just mean that ahead of time, we don't know how many there will be. Another example might be the weight of each of the cats, or every applicant that applies for a job posting, or the simulation should work with any number of balls, or there should be a fireworks show with any number of fireworks. All of these have this key sense of there being an arbitrary number of values that need to be represented. And that's what arbitrary size data is going to do for us. Now that we've got a general sense of what arbitrary size data is going to do for us, let's look at lists and the mechanisms that support lists. Lists are the first kind of arbitrary size data we're going to use. So what is a list? Well, let's see. The first list is empty. This is a list with nothing in it. Now we might want to put something in that list. Suppose we want to have a list of all our favorite hockey teams. Well, one way to write that is using this primitive called cons. And if we say cons Canucks empty, this is a list with one thing in it. The way to read it is that we're adding Canucks onto the front of an existing list. Now I might have more than one favorite hockey team. Suppose I like the Flames and the Canucks. This is a list with two things in it. We say the list has two elements. If I run this at this point, we'll see three values. The first value is empty. The second value is the list that has Canucks on the front of empty. And the third value is the list that has flames on the front of the list that has Canucks and empty. So cons is both a primitive that builds lists and it's also the way that we look at the values that are lists. Now lists can contain other kinds of values as well. Here's a list of numbers. And if I run that, We'll see one, two, three. And it's important that when it's an expression, we can have expressions in here. So this could be plus three, four, cons, plus five, six, cons, plus 32, 11, empty. And the value of that is cons seven, cons 11, cons 43, empty. So that's how we make lists. Before you go on, let me ask you to take this problem, so stop the video, and write an expression that evaluates to a list representing the days in a weekend. And once you're done with that, go ahead and start the video again.
Okay, here's my answer to an expression that evaluates to a list representing the days in a weekend. So here's cons, and I'll represent the days as a string like this, cons Saturday, cons Sunday, empty. Okay, so it's a list of two elements, Saturday and Sunday. Now once we built lists up, how can we take them apart? Well first, let's give a couple lists names, and to do that we'll just use the kind of define that we've already been using. What I'm going to do is I'm going to comment everything so far out. I'll comment it out with a box. And then let me just make a list called, I'll give make a variable called teams, which is cons, canucks, cons, flames, cons, leafs, empty. And I'll make another one called nums, which is cons one, cons two, cons three, empty. Now this is just showing that we can define variables to have lists as their values. If I run this now, nothing happens because there's just two defines, but teams has is that list and nums is that list. So now let's try to take lists apart. Suppose I have a list and I want the first thing in it. Well, the way I do that is there's a primitive called first. And if I call first with a value that's a list, it will give me the first thing in the list. So in this case, teams is this list. So what I get back if we run this is Canucks. You might also want to get the rest of the list. So there's a primitive for that called rest. If you say rest of teams, and run that. Well, first of teams is Canucks, and rest of teams is cons, flames, cons, leaves, empty. Now, can, can you see how you'd get the second thing in a list? The way you get the second thing in a list is first you get the rest of the list. So for this list, the rest of it is cons, flames, and cons, leaves. And now the first of that is the second thing in the list. So if we run that, we get flames. It's the rest of teams, and then the first of that is flames. OK, before you go on, let me ask you to do another problem. Here's the problem. I'd like you to write an expression that evaluates to the third value in nums. Basically, this expression needs to produce 3, because the third value in nums is 3. So go ahead and write that expression. Stop the video now, write the expression, and then start the video again, and I'll show you my answer. OK, here's my answer to the problem. We want the third value in nums. And the way we get the first thing in a list is we take first. The way we get the second is we take first of rest. And the way we get the third is we take first of rest of rest, because let's look at it. We take the rest, and then the rest, and then the thing we want is the first. So it's first of rest of rest of nums. And that should produce three for us, and it does. Now just a side note here. BSL has functions called second and third that will directly get the second and third items in a list and it has fourth as well. We'd like to ask you to do not use these for the next couple weeks. What we've learned is that people have a much easier time writing the kinds of functions we're going to be writing on lists if at first they just use first and rest and don't use functions like second and third. In a couple weeks, you'll be fine to go ahead and use second and third when that's appropriate. OK, now let me show you one more important primitive, and then we'll be done seeing all the primitives on lists. I'm going to go ahead and copy these out. And I want to show you the type predicate for lists. And there are two of them. One is empty, which tells you whether a value is empty. So empty of empty is going to produce true. And empty of anything else, including, for example, a cons, is going to produce false. So 
So that's empty. Let's run it so you can see it happen. There, empty of empty is true, but empty of cons is false. And there's another one that we won't use quite as often, which is cons question mark. Cons question mark of anything that isn't a cons, including empty, is going to be false. Only cons of a cons will produce true. Okay, so this is false, false, true. So there you go, that's all the list primitives. So just as a quick summary, here we go. Empty is a value that's the empty list. Cons is a constructor for lists, so that if we say cons1, cons2, cons3, empty, we get a list of three elements. First is a kind of selector. It selects for the first element of a list. So first of cons a, cons b empty produces a. Rest is also a kind of selector. It selects for everything in the list after the first element. So rest of cons a, cons b empty produces cons b empty because it takes everything after the first element. Empty is a type predicate for the empty value. So empty of empty produces true, empty of anything else produces false. And cons is a type predicate for conses. So cons question mark of any cons produces true, and cons question mark of anything else produces false. So there we go. Those are the primitive list mechanisms. You can always turn to the course mechanism page to be reminded of what they are quickly, or consult the help desk to see how they work, or of course you can come back to this video. What we need to do now is learn how to write data definitions using lists to talk about representing arbitrary size information using arbitrary size data. That's what we'll do next time.